Hey, Professor Stuckler here and welcome back. I've got an incredibly exciting session lined up today. I'm gonna to share with you one of my top writing tips. And this tip is gonna to bring together a lot of the principles we've talked about on this channel and boil it down into a simple test, a test I call the skip test. And it's a test that you can use today, immediately after watching this video to make sure your writing is clear, coherent, logically structured so that your supervisors, colleagues can clearly understand and you won't get lost writing. It's so simple, almost so obvious, you're gonna wonder, why didn't anybody ever teach you this before? And I, you know, I'm excited because I've never shared this with anybody apart from my grad students at Oxford, Harvard, and now Bocconi and Belong where I'm a full professor. And so what I'm gonna do in this video is first, I'm gonna give you a conceptual framework for thinking about the structure of your paper and how you can apply the skip test to it, what that skip test is, how it works. Then to make it concrete, we're gonna go through some real world examples. We're gonna take two papers from the published literature. We're gonna apply the skip test to it to see if those are logically structured. And by the end of it, you're gonna be able to walk away and do this with your own writing. So from here, let's uh, roll over sleeves. I'm gonna head over to the computer. Let's dive in and get started with the skip test. Okay, so here I've pulled up a whiteboard and what I'm gonna do is cover for you the skip test. And the skip test as really named for a reason, because it just involves skipping. If you can imagine uh, the structure of any paper that you're writing on, it could be a chapter, it could be an article or manuscript, you're gonna have some broad sections. Imagine they look like this. Uh, might be an intro, might be a methods, uh, results, conclusion, um, could be a range of things. And inside each of these, you're going to have different paragraph chunks that I'm just gonna design like this. So what the skip test effectively involves is going from each paragraph to paragraph, reading only the first sentence, the topic sentence, the main point sentence of each paragraph, and to see if it makes sense. If you can do this, if you can follow the structure, the argument, what you're trying to convey, just reading the first sentence, it's a good sign that you have a logical, clear and coherent structure. And so what I wanna do is show you kind of in practice what this is gonna look like. So let's head over to Google Scholar and find some real articles that we can look at. And as we look at these articles, uh, and you'll find in your own writing that there are published papers that are just not well written. I want you to do better than that because if you can write clearly and coherently, you're gonna get a, a fair ride for your ideas. Your supervisors will understand you, uh, your colleagues, your peers, you'll get better feedback. Most importantly, you're less likely to get lost. And that's one of the most frustrating things that students I work with experience if they don't have clarity in their writing. So I've been thinking about Ukraine lately, so I've, I've found here an article on uh, international arms trade and its impact on health. It's in the British Medical Journal, which uh, has good in-house editors and is really a great journal to read if you want uh, clear scientific writing. So uh, I'm gonna zoom in here and make this a little bit easier for you to see. Um, international arms trade and its impact on health. Let's just go down. You can see conceptually, like we were talking about before, you've got a big section here in the intro. You've got a section here, direct consequences of the use of weapons before going on to a next big session on indirect health consequences of militarization weaponry. Let's just look at the direct consequences. And again, we're not gonna read the whole thing, we're just reading the first sentence. So here we go. The most obvious impact on health of militarization and weaponry is the use of arms to kill and maim. Okay, so that's pretty clear. Let's see if it now flows. Among the most pernicious of these weapons are landmines. So you can see there's a nice flow, you can easily see this first paragraph goes to the next. And then I can already tell this paragraph is gonna be about why landmines are so bad. And then landmine production, we're gonna go into a little bit more about landmines. Landmine production has changed dramatically over the past decade. And it is estimated that there are more than 100 million mines scattered and another 150 million stockpiles ready to be scattered. Okay, so we've gone and said uh, very clearly, uh, the, the, the most obvious impact on health is the use of these arms. The worst is landmines, their production is changing, there's still a whole bunch in stockpiles. And then we're gonna go into the next weapon. Another weapon that's received a lot of condemnation is the blinding laser. Um, and so this passes the skip test. You see a nice flow from one paragraph to the next that's very clear. We're taking the reader by the hand 
and guiding them in the argument to where we want to take them so that they have deep understanding of this topic thanks to your research and discussion of it. So yeah, I really like this. Let's go and let's look at another one uh, just for completeness. And I hope you can see how you can do this in, uh, look at your own paper and see if you can do this. If, if this will ensure that each of your paragraphs is following our peer system, making one big point and that there's a flow from one paragraph to the next. If you haven't seen our training on the peer system, you're not going to want to miss that. It goes more detail and you'll find a link video in, uh, in the description of the video uh, here on YouTube. Okay, so I'm going to go back to Google Scholar. Let's look for another one. And there's one that I found on Ghana misperceptions. Uh, I mean, I'm directly picking up on topics that I find really enjoyable. Um, and here we go. We can get a PDF. Now, this is in, in a lesser journal, uh, Journal of Family Planning, but still, still good. So I'm going to zoom in so you can see it. And uh, structured article. Let's go through and just just find some some uh, some sections. Okay. Let's look in the first part. So. Um, while in many low- and middle-income countries, there has been an increase in contraceptive prevalence, in West Africa, contraceptive uptake has been remarkably slow. And then we're going to get into uh, the setting. Um, here we go. Just taking a look. Yep. Ghana. So we're going to zoom in like a laser beam. Now we're going to talk about Ghana as a case study. Ghana is a low-income country undergoing a significant fertility transition. And uh, based on unprompted and prompted reports of knowledge of contraceptive methods, awareness has slipped. And then um, here's some reasons why. Fear of side effects, especially those perceived to impair fertility, remain the leading cause of non-use of modern contraception. And uh, then I would have broken this out into a separate paragraph because this is now uh, trying, this paragraph is going to try to say, you know, what um, what the issue is, and ideally it would say what the gap is, and then go. And then there, in this study, we used in-depth qualitative methods with women intending to gain more holistic understanding. Um, so I, I think if I'm looking at this, I would have maybe put this as its, its own paragraph. Sometimes journals have a premium on space, and they'll smush stuff together. Um, at least for clarity at the beginning, I would enable each of your paragraphs to make one point and have room to breathe. But the key point here is, does it pass our skip test? And yes, it does, because this is, is really clearly structured. I can follow the article quite nicely uh, first, just by following the first sentences. It has a clear flow. It has a clear direction. Uh, of where we're going, leading us to the important next part of the article, which is to get from the introduction, the issue, to get to what we're doing in this study. So, guys, um, I hope you found this video helpful. Uh, let me know how you get on using the skip test in your own work, if it helps bring you clarity and direction. And always do remember to make an outline, because uh, you're not going to pass the skip test if you don't have an underlying outline. Um, so, again, this brings up a lot of the writing principles together in one simple test that we've talked about on this channel. And just a gentle reminder, do join my community, Fast Track Grad, 100% free on Facebook. It gives us a chance to be in touch in direct messages. And every Friday, we put on a live workshop and training that you're going to find personally helpful. All right, see you in the next video.